Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Minister Dead E, representing IYE Records. And yo, I hope y'all ready. We're going to start something that's going to be phenomenal this year. Um, stay tuned. Stay tuned. I hope y'all been liking the video post, man. Because like I said, our, I mean, our ministry is definitely, you know what I'm saying, it's, what's happening is we're getting more and more consecrated. You know what I'm saying? We're spending a lot of time in the Word of God. Or we're, we're, we're studying a whole lot more. Because the thing is, we want you all to understand that this is not just a joke. This is not just a trend. You know, this is real talk right here. You know what I'm saying? And one thing that we want to go ahead and express to you all today is, well, you know what I'm saying? Once again, it's a little plug-in for some new music that's coming out. We're going to drop this set-free mixtape. Uh, it's going to be coming soon, so please keep your eyes and ears locked, all right? But the, the um, post that we want to go ahead, what we want to express to you all today is set-free. Now, when I was thinking, when me and Angela was talking about that, you know, there's a particular um, analogy that I wanted to use. Well, first, let me read this verse here. It's actually coming out of Romans chapter 6, uh, verse 6. Is, yeah, verse 6. Yeah, so Romans chapter 6, verse 6, all right? It says, We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. All right. Let's keep let's put a pin pin dot right there on that last part of that verse. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer slaves to sin. Okay, let's just break that verse down. We are no longer slaves. Alright. Let's go ahead and go back mm, about about 200, 250 years. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and of course, this word is for anybody that hears, but this is just for the sake of the analogy. So imagine that we're all slaves. Alright? We're working hard, you know what I'm saying? Labor is tough, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, we've heard all the stories, we've been in enough history classes to know what, you know what I'm saying, Africans had to go through during the slavery period. But then you have, you know what I'm saying, our president, Abraham Lincoln, who writes, the, who writes and gives us the proclamation that, of emancipation that, you know what, they're, they're free. Alright? We had the Civil War, you know what I'm saying, and we already know who won the outcome in that. But then, you know what I'm saying, and because of that war outcome or what have you, you've seen a lot of, I mean, that's when the real evidence, the prevalence or uh, the emergence of slaves, you know what I'm saying, realizing that, hey, we're free. And we're going to go ahead and live our lives accordingly. But now, just, now with all that, now that we have that in mind and we're picturing ourselves in that particular state, um, in, uh, as far as in history, ask this question, answer this question for me. What would it be like to know or to feel or just what would it be like if you were the last slave to know that you were free? What would it be like? You're still slaving, but everybody else is free. See, that's kind of what it's like being a Christian. And then, against the world. I mean, everybody in the world, I mean, yes, you're going to see cats, you know what I'm saying, going to the club. Yes, you're going to see cats making money and putting money over anything. Yes, you're going to see guys who's going to, you know what I'm saying, um... Not treat their wives or not treat their girlfriends the same. Or you're going to see girls who's going to use their bodies just to get what they want. You're going to see all that. But see, what you that's, that's the physical manifestation. But what you don't see is the chains that's being locked on those individuals. The strongholds that those people have, you know what I'm saying, to what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? For a person who uh, works, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're thirsty. They're thirsty for money. So guess what? You always going to see them hustling. You're going to always see them, you know what I'm saying, working at the store 40, 50 hours. You're going to always see them, you know what I'm saying, always doing something to gain money. And you're never going to see them actually, you know what I'm saying, live life and fulfillment and actually enjoy life. You know what I'm saying? Just like you are, you know, I mean, for a person who's desiring a relationship or anything like that, they always trying to find, you know what I'm saying, that person or whatever, you know what I'm saying, because they believe that that person is what's going to fulfill them. But you you all know, you all read all the face the drama that's going on and everything like that. But, so, but here's the thing I want to express. Those individuals, you know what I'm saying, yes, you see all that, but once again, 
that's a physical manifestation of only something that's going on spiritual. See, spiritually, they're, they're under a stronghold. They're being locked. They're chained. They're bound by a sin. What they don't know is that very thing that has them by the grip hold, the very thing that has them, you know what I'm saying, just locked down, they can get out of it. We're Christians. And it says here in the verse, um, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin may lose its power in our lives. See, when Jesus Christ was crucified, I mean, he rose up with all power in his hands. So whatever is sin that was you know, in the world or whatever the case may be, guess what? He looked at that and he was like, you know what? You no longer have no power amongst my people. Because I was the sacrifice. I was the one that stood in the gap. And guess what? I overcame you. And because I overcame you, you no longer exist. But what, what drives me, I don't want to say drives me crazy, but what's bewildering is that there's a lot of Christians who are up under the hand of grace, but they still believe that they're still stuck to their past. They're still stuck to their situations. Why is it that, you know what I'm saying, every time we go to church, we're always hearing messages like, you can be free, you can be free, you can be free. You always hear messages that's talking about, you know, and that's good. I'm not talking down on that, so don't get it twisted, all right? But what, what I'm really going to get at is, we're hearing all these messages, but they're only messages that's talking about the sin that we're still dealing with, even though we're Christians. But don't you know life isn't supposed to be always on the defense? Don't you know that you can also live life on the offense as well, too? You can actually say, you know what? I am a victory. I mean, I, I am victorious. What? That's probably a new trendy. That's probably that's something you never even thought of because you are victorious. You can wake up. You can think right now. This is the moment where you can start praising God right now because you're victorious. You're, you are an overcomer. Why? Wow. Man, I have 66 of the books in the Bible that will tell you why you are over, why you are overcoming. You're no longer bound to that sin. So if you really, really wanted to just say, you know what, I no longer want to fornicate. I no longer want to, you know what I'm saying, rob from God. I no longer want to, I don't want, I don't want to live a life that dis that's dishonoring God. If you really wanted to, guess what? This is a matter of saying Yes. Now, don't give me that, oh, well, Justin, you know what? It's much harder. I mean, it's easier to say than done. No. You know what I'm saying? Because you already lock it, you're locking yourself up in your mind when you believe that. If you truly want to overcome whatever obstacle that's in your life, look, it's already yours. You are already set free. I'm going to say that again. You are already set free. You just got to believe it. God has already given you the key. The key is sitting right there in front of you. All you got to do is grab it, unlock it, throw it down, wreck shot. That's all you got to do. You are set free because of Christ. Don't let 2012 be like 2011 in previous years. Matter of fact, to some extent, you almost have to have amnesia. You, when you become a Christian, Yes, it's a good idea to remember your experiences, but just because you remember your experiences don't necessarily mean that you have to keep on living your life and rewind. You're set free. When you can understand that, when you can understand how victorious you really are, it's not just for you. Because some of us got kids. Some of us got family members. Some of us got friends. And when we live our life set free, and when we live in our life victoriously, we're living our lives like it's stamped by God, it gives them the pathway so that they can choose. And I don't know about you, but I remember how it felt when I first found out I was a sinner, but I also remember how it felt when I realized that Jesus truly loves me. And that I was set free from my past mistakes. I know I've done some. I mean, let's just keep it real. I mean, we all have done something wrong and everything like that. I've done many things wrong. Um, but the fact of the matter is, when I declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, 
I declared on that day that I was free from those situations. And I remember the, I remember those feelings. And the thing is, you ha you remember those feelings too. And do your do your friends, your family, and everybody else a favor. Live your life like a testimony. Yo, this is your boy Mr. J E. Representing IYE Records. You already know the deal. Keep it locked. Your boy is out.